surface with Bob. Welcome everybody, Breakfast with Bob. My name is Bob Babbitt. We're brought to you by the Professional Triathletes Organization, by Amp Human, by VeloFix, Norma Tech, Form Goggles, You Can, and our Challenged Athletes Foundation. This year we sent out 3,921 grants totaling. $5.9 million to keep challenge athletes in the game of life through sport. Our next guest, she has won 11 full Ironmans and 23 half Ironmans in her amazing career. Meredith Kessler joins us. Meredith, how the heck are you doing? So good to see you. I don't care if it's through a computer, Bob. I love it. So it's, good to see you. It's always so much fun. And I love how resourceful you were trying to be through all this pandemic stuff. <laughs> I've got to swim, so I'm going to go on Amazon and, and take me through that. You got the, the little blue uh -huh. pool and all the chlorine. Yeah. and Yeah. I thought I was going to be a genius. I was like, I saw someone post this, like a swimmer. And she, hey, she made it work. She just figured it out better than I did. And, and I went to her, the link she posted, and I was like, all right. It was literally, it cost me 130 bucks because I already own a tether. So it was like $69 for this round pool that you blow up. And then yeah. it was, you know, 20 bucks for the chlorine and another, you know, 10, 15 bucks, whatever for the filter to like get all the yuck out that would come in. Um, and I got it and it came in a box, like literally the size of like a shoe box. And I was like, huh, <laughs> how's this going to work? And, you know, I looked at it and I, I set it up. I started to set it up and I was like, I literally called Rennie and I was like, hey, Ren, hi. Um, would you, do you have a master spas contact that you could, I don't need anything. Just like, can you pop me over to that? And uh, that was the best decision I ever made. And I, I literally, as she knows, I like teared up because like they got back to me right away. And I, and then Rennie was out of the picture because she had done her job, which I'm so thankful for. You don't get that much, you know, like another, a fellow pro and peer nice. introducing to you to a potential sponsor. Like we're all squirrels trying to get a nut. Right. So it's like, she was like, Mayor, I got you. And I, and I called to thank her for it. I literally like choked up, um, t telling her just thank you for that intro. It, it really means meant a lot to me. Yeah. What I love about you, you, you're always thinking. I remember back in the day when you guys were doing, uh, you were doing spin classes sure. to raise money for CAF when you're up in the Bay Area. Mm -hmm. And when you got this, all of a sudden, you've got the master, you've, you've mm -hmm. got the master spot and you're probably mm -hmm. thinking, huh, yeah. I can create something here. Yeah. Take me through the, the yeah. next steps that led to the real sure. mother of triathlon. Sure. Well, there, there's been... Um, things lurking in my brain since I left California. Like, as you remember, Bob, I, uh, every year for probably six years, um, we would do a challenge athlete, uh, charity ride. So we'd yep. go to Velo SF was a studio with all the trainers and we would do a four hour, um, charity. And when I first did it probably back in 2014, let's say maybe 2012, whatever it was, we raised $50,000 the first year. And each year it got better and better and better. And by the sixth year of it, we were up to 250,000 that, that year. So in my world for that event, we raised what over 600 K for challenge athletes yeah. foundation, which, which is, you know, a, it's a good chunk of change, of course, but I felt like I moved to Ohio and then I was like, but wait, I don't have my annual charity, uh, you know, charity ride for Challenge Athlete Foundation. And that's been, that's been bothering me, to be honest. And then uh, we had a wedding, la you know, last time there was a, um, well, I was very pregnant. I uh, yes. haven't been able to go to the, um, San Diego you know, be yes. the best triathlon there is um, in San Diego. I haven't been able to go the last two years because I was very pregnant, like unable to fly. And then, um, we had a wedding and I, and of course I, I, I couldn't, I didn't want to miss the wedding of course. So I was like, all right, I got like, I've got all my thoughts going. And then I was like, how can I just put everything together during this very unique time? And, uh, I, I, I well, I went to Rennie first and I said, Rennie, would you be interested in doing this with me? This is a very much a with, this is not a race. This is a community um, together fundraiser. Yes, because we want to enrich other people, but it, it's also just like a way for us to like be together even when we're apart. So um, I said, Rennie, how, what do you think about doing a virtual triathlon? We, we both have our master spas in our respective homes, myself in Columbus, Ohio, Rennie in Boulder, and then we can, 
you know, hop on over to our she sheds and we can get on and we can do a, um, you know, a bike and run with people. And, and those of those that are on Zwift, awesome. That's great. But you don't have to be on Zwift to enjoy the show and be participate and spectate and all that. And then, then in the second breath, I was like, then we can do what I am so passionate about. Um, while this, of course, is a free registration, it's also, though, an opportunity to chip in for a foundation that is so near and dear to my heart, which is, as you know, the Challenge Athlete Foundation, because um, it's enriched my life for the past decade or more. And um, I just want to be able to, to give back and do that. And Rennie was like, literally, this is what I love her about her. She's like, yeah, MBK, I'm in. I was like, well, that was easy. I didn't have to do any convincing. Uh, and then, well, I did say, because we were initially going to do, <laughs> I was like, so do you want to do an Ironman distance? And she, that's when she's like, yeah, no. <laughs> it's so, so funny when I, when I was talking to her, I'm like, I looked at the distances. I'm like, I don't think the two mile swim came from you, Rennie. <laughs> she's, like, she's like, no. And I'm guessing the run might have been a little longer to begin with. So, like, <laughs> well, I tried doing, you know, I was trying to think of like fun, you know, for the ages of our kids. Yeah, yeah. And uh, as you see, we're, we're swimming two miles because they're two. We're biking 58 miles because that's the combination of their birthdays. And then I had a 17 mile run uh, because they were born in 2017. But then what we did was we, we were like, you know what, let's shorten it to 10 miles. And we're doing uh, a combination of our ages, uh, 40 laps, because I'm 41, she's 39. So we're going to do 40 laps around a track uh, within Zwift or wherever you're running. Um, so that'll be really, really fun. That's, it was supposed to be fun. It's less about how many miles or this and that and more about, yeah, it's a show. Like this is a whole show for four and a half hours of fun. So we're really, we're going to start in the master spas. And then as soon as we're done with that run, we're going to grab our chocolate milk and our cocktail and we're going to get back into the master spa and just talk about the day uh, some really more sure. yeah and people can register at t0endurance.com right that's the place to uh, go. yep try try moms um yes the link is on rennie or my profile but yes it's um try moms.t0endurance.com and okay. it will be live broadcasted on on that uh platform once you register you'll get e daily emails about how many giveaways we have um, how important it is about Challenge Athlete Foundation and, um, and having a fundraiser bar for that. And it'll just be it's an enriching, fun day where there's the giveaways are insane. Even, I'm, I, even I can't believe the sp sponsors um, so kindly gave as much as they did for this. So uh, that's exciting. Um, we have all kinds. And what I love the most, it's not just catered to my sponsors or Rennie's sponsors. It's all of our sponsors together. We have a couple mutual, but not a lot. So yeah. like it's, it's everybody, it's a team. And I just, I love the team aspect of it. Yeah. So what is it about CAF? When did you connect mm -hmm. with it? And why, why does it mean mm -hmm. so much to you? Sure. I met Alan Schenken, who's a big part of the Challenge Athlete Foundation. The world back role revolves through Schenk. Shank, Shanktastic. I met him back a oh, long time ago in San Francisco and he was in my cycling classes. And, and then we just got talking and it's funny. I knew him probably, a, a, like, I never even knew that he had a prosthetic leg. Like, he, it, it just, like, never, he just never talked about it. And, right. and then, like, I saw him on the bike, and I didn't, and I was like, hey, dude, you have a prosthetic leg. I mean, this is, like, six months after I had known him. I was like, <laughs> did you want to make mention of that? And he's like, oh, yeah, it's no big deal. So anyway, and, like, went on to, like, the next conversation. I was like, rewind, step back. I want to hear more about that. And then we just like got talking and then he took me to a challenge athlete event. And I like, when I say I weeped, it's not because I feel sorry. I don't mean that it's because I see their resilience and their fortitude and their gumption um, of how they want to thrive and compete in sport. And this foundation allows that, that privilege and that opportunity by getting them the resources they need to thrive and that's why i remember when i was at the um, triathlon in san diego i got to see gianna who is now like i mean she's probably like 10 or more but she might be a teenager now and breezy uh, all of that when and when they have just been given these prosthetic legs and to this day and you hear me all the time because i, I choke up not because i feel like oh oh poor them they have press no i get to see them shine more than ever they they uh put that on their prosthetic leg for the first time and were asked to run a 1k 1k right and, and honestly gianna fell 
every two steps, she'd fall down, like scratch her elbow, scratch her hand, hit her nose, didn't phase her, didn't shed one tear, not one. She got up, she tried again, and then she'd fall, and she got up, and she tried again. And I just stood there watching her and running alongside her, and I was like, you are my hero. You're like three years old, and you are my hero. And now to see what she's doing now, she just slaps on her prosthetic leg, and it goes about, it goes about her day. It's not even a second thought. And she, like, runs probably marathons on it now. So it's, it's so, just enriching. Yeah. Arizona, Ironman yeah. Arizona coming up in November, if it happens. Yeah. Guess who is doing that as an 18 year old? Is it Breezy? Breezy is, is doing Ironman Arizona. Her hero, uh, Sarah Ryan. Uh, amazing. Single, yeah. 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 Sarah was I got to email thing. her dad. I got to email Stan. That's amazing. Okay, go ahead. I was going to say, Sarah Reinertsen was the yes. one who gave her the little Sarah bear when she was in the mm -hmm. hospital with the prosthetic mm -hmm. leg on it. Mm -hmm. And Sarah was the first single above knee to finish Iron Man. Mm -hmm. And, and she has been, Breezy has been saying for years, I want to be the first single above knee to the youngest mm -hmm. to complete an Iron Man. Right. And that's what her goal is. So it's, uh, it's pretty, actually, and she was just in that film, the Eric Burns film. And I think you yep. know Eric from NorCal. Eric Very well, yeah. Eric let them play. And there's a yep. whole segment in there with Eric running with Breezy. That is, that's pretty epic. Yeah, it's, it's literally know. music to my ears to hear that. And, and then being able to know Challenge Athlete Foundation and the families that well has um, also enriched my life. Like the fact that I, I, I've known Breezy since she was literally probably nine years old. Yeah. And her family and her mom and dad. And so that, that really makes my heart sing to hear. So I, awesome. And I think the, I think there's like five or six family members who are also racing. Of course. <laughs> of course. That's what All her brothers. Yeah, the yep. sister. Oh, amazing. Yeah, yeah. And they've been training. So we're talking 1030 Eastern time. You guys will be in the spa, right? Hanging out, chatting. We will, we will swim 45 minutes. We'll, yeah. we'll, we'll be sure. We'll, um, at 1030, the live coverage starts, but we'll right. swim 11 to about 1145. Long transition. The um, bike starts at noon. We'll bike two hours and 45 minutes, and the run starts at 3 p.m. Uh, this is all Eastern Standard Time. And 50 you know who I bike, Yeah, yep. 15 mile bike, 10 mile run. You got it. And it, again, it's, it, we've got 5,000, the first 5,000 that's, that's raised, Master Spa is matching that. How cool they're, is that? They're matching that. And what a great partnership to have. Just when they, they said that, like our fifth conversation, when I mentioned this, uh, this charity that I wanted to do, but also okay. this event. And so like, I, I can't even believe it. So I literally, my, my gratitude was pretty high. And guess who else I need to call to get involved is Rob Balukas is a gentleman that I introduced to CAF. He got in a um, very bad uh, bike crash several years ago, right before he was gonna race uh, Santa Cruz 70.3 and he became paralyzed from the- uh, Waist down. Yeah, chest chest down, and and he literally, Bob. Though, he did one of my fundraisers in San Francisco, probably maybe just a few months after the incident. He we we Challenge Athlete Foundation provided him with the right resources to be able to do a hand cycle, and he hand cycled four hours. Never done it in his life before. So and now I, yeah. he'll look at fifty eight miles this weekend. He'll be like, eh, okay, I got to go work out after that. But I'm going to get him involved. I'm going to email, text him when we're done with this call. <laughs> you know, what's so funny is right before this craziness hit, that same yeah. weekend, like the March 7th, mm -hmm. we were at the Pasadena Triathlon. He raced, you know, That's raced amazing. the Pasadena Tri, and I was there. And his, yep. he's, he's, we saw him in Nice. He went yep. and tried, he tried to get up that hill on, in Nice. They, I think they pulled him off, but that, that hill was ridiculous. I can't believe he even tried it. He tried it. And we'll see him in Kona before we know it. I know yeah. it. So Meredith, take me back a little bit. What got you into this craziness to begin with? Yeah. You were a you were a businesswoman. The next I thing was. You I tried to be. Uh, yeah. You know what? I I was an athlete my whole life. Obviously, I just my parents threw me in sport ever th since I can remember. But um, and that shaped who I am today. But then I played field hockey. My scholarship in college was for field hockey, a team sport. I always wanted yep. to play a team sport. And then when I graduated, it was like my whole world was about to fall apart. I was like no more team sport. What, what am I going to do? Right. What, what that's shaped my whole, that's been my whole world. And I was like, well, I can't go pay, play pro field hockey anywhere or pro soccer or whatever the team, like I love the team aspect. And then I just decided, well, just to hold me over until I figured that out. I was like, 
you know what? Okay, I see this Iron Man thing, and I use my college graduation money, and I just bought a, a, my first bike. I, I still own it. I bought a Quintana Roo, and it was literally at the time, even 20 years ago, this was literally 20 years ago, it was $3,000. I used all my college graduation money to get it, and I plopped myself in a full distance uh, Iron Man two weeks later. And the story goes that I did it in running shorts on the bike, which was not a good call, Bob, not a good call. Um, and that's funny. If you look at it, I finished, I think I finished in about 12 hours and I was like, all right, I could not walk the next day, literally. Um, and I loved every minute of it in terms of that was my first of, you know, 69 Ironman finishes. And I still feel grateful that I have that, um, I guess, what butterflies in your stomach or that same like new just passion for it that I did at 21 that I do now at 41 and yeah I caught that bug and I ended up being able to make my passion my job um, and now career and that was after being an age grouper for nine years which I really enjoyed also. How was the transition going from really a hotbed of triathlon being in the Bay Area sure. places to train all the time sure. and then going back home to Columbus? Yeah. You know, Seabus, Columbus gets a bad rap sometimes. They're like Midwest. That's like the middle of nowhere. There's cows all around. That's it. And, and I'm like, there are parts of that in Ohio. But Columbus was a place like to be back. Don't get me wrong. I lived in California for 18 years. My sister moved there with her husband and family. We were there and they're still there now with my circle of friends, which I love. And we moved here. But you know what? It's, it's nice to be back to my Midwest roots. Um, Training hasn't, what, what I do now is I swim with my friend's children who are in their teens <laughs> and they <laughs> crush me. They crush me. Um, biking, I found, I found the right trails. I have my she shed at home and then um, I found some great running buddies too. So um, I don't have those team Everyman Jack guys and their, their CEO, Rich, is a good buddy and they're going to be joining the event on um, Saturday, but uh, virtually, of course, but I miss having that dynamic of training sure. partners. Um, that said, it's nice to, I was thinking about Mac would have probably lived in a closet if we lived in California, because, sure. you know, there's more space in Ohio, it's a little bit more sustainable. Uh, but we feel, and honestly, our parents aren't getting any younger, and both sets of parents are about 15 um, minutes away. And so it's been a nice change. We've, it's crazy. We've been here almost three years now, if you can believe it. Time no. really flies. It flies. It's like two and a half years. Yeah. And the adaptation of being a mom as a yeah. professional athlete uh, yeah. and making and, and getting your body back to where sure. you can race again. How sure. hard is that? Yeah, I remember we talked when, after Mac was kind of only a few months. I raced Ironman Texas when he had just turned five months. And I really like didn't know how that if like my body would just like break down. I did have him via emergency C-section. So that was like a different recovery. Um, yeah. But you know what? I always knew deep down I wanted to come back to the sport without losing the tender and precious moments of newborn time and being a good mom and everything. And honestly, if I thought it was hard to come back to triathlon when he was like a newborn where he slept a lot and he didn't move, I was wrong <laughs> because it got harder as he got older. Yeah. And even now at two years old, it's it's hard. It's hardest because he has opinions and personality and moods. When he was a baby, it's like, eh, he, he won't know the difference. And he doesn't move. And that, one minute, he's not almost out in the street, you know? So, right. Um, and, you know, the sleep thing, the nursing thing, it, it, you know, and being uh, what they call it advanced maternal age, which is, you know, doctor's nice way of saying you're older to have a baby. I get all that. And so it, it did take a toll on the body. But I look back now and I'm like, and I, even I am like, I cannot believe that I was able to race an Ironman when Mac was literally just turned pretty much on the day he had turned five months, wasn't even eating solid foods yet. One of my best friends, Hillary Miss Biscay, had to nurse him while I was racing because he was, wouldn't take literally a bottle. He wouldn't take anything but a mother. <laughs> and so uh, it just, the experience took me through a loop. Um, also, you know, like all moms, we struggle with mom guilt. Like, 
every training now has to have a purpose. I don't have time to, you know, mess around. Like no, I, I got to no. get in and get out. And, and one thing that changed since we moved to Ohio is I look at like my training partners, I would have never been able to meet them at 530 in the morning when I was starting to be a new mom. It's like, I was barely getting any sleep. So I got my best sleep sometimes between five and 8am, you know, um, because Mac wasn't a good sleeper, still right. isn't, but he will nap during the day and I get a good session in then. But, um, yeah, it's a, it's a different dynamic, but what I want to tell moms to be that want to come back. And, and I, ha I remember Michelle Vesterby reached out before she had Marcus and she was like, how am I going to do it? And, and look at her. She's like thriving more than ever. I'm like, you can do it. And you know, we can do hard things as Glenn, Glennon Doyle says. And, and that includes coming back to the racing course after we've busted out a human. And, um, it's been the, most challenging thing, as I've told you before, but it's been the best thing. Um, and, and I wouldn't have it any other way. And I feel like now it's like next time we're at Ironman New Zealand, he'll be three. He's been there when he's been one, two and three, the guy's spoiled. So, um, it just makes me realize how enriching too it is to have he and Aaron at the finish line. And I hope someday he understands what he got to do as a little, yeah. as a little human. And um, that's why I write those letters to him after a race. I'm like, dear Mac, here's what, where your mom failed. And here's where we had a blast, you know? So, yeah. That's awesome. What is it about Ironman New Zealand? I mean, there's still like, we mm -hmm. talk about when I was interviewing Rennie and we talked about Kona. Yeah. She, she felt yeah. coming from Brisbane, when she got off the plane, she felt like a warm hug because awesome. it was it, the humidity was something she grew up in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And for a lot of people, they get on the plane, they're like, oh, my God, there's a blast burner, <laughs> and it's going to be a nightmare. When you walk off the, yes, right? When you get yeah. off the plane in Taupo, is there yep. just some feeling of that mm -hmm. warm hug that mm -hmm. I'm home? This is where mm -hmm. I need to be. Yeah, when I, it's like an instant calmness and it's like all your chi and your good energy is intact. And then you get into the town and you see the people that have shaped your career for the past decade. Um, it's it by far it's a it's something that will never be forgotten and we'll go, we'll go back to Telpo even when years down the road when I'm well retired because we've made such connections there um we just feel like it's like our second home and so yes I well I love Kona don't get me wrong it's a great place I don't feel that love <laughs> as, much, <laughs> as much as I do when I land in in Taupo New Zealand for sure so and my husband too that's the thing my husband thrives there also I I try to thrive there but my husband with the fishing and oh, getting out there to catch all we go to Poranui which is just this fly fishing lodge after the race and we just chill there for a couple days and um it's it's really enriched our lives year after year Bob huge have you it, it, a lot of you've rate, like I said, you've 69 full Ironmans and a lot of these time when you go to these mar markets, you're, mm -hmm. you're making friends and staying yeah. with families. And mm -hmm. if you, if, has that been become a big part of your life? So the relationship Huge. you've built at these other, at these locations? Yeah. People always ask why Meredith, you're such a creature of habit. You do the same races over and over. And that's not just because like, I do like seeing new places. It's not that I'm not spontaneous, or, but I mostly go for the people. Uh, St. George, Utah, Mont Tremblant, Canada, uh, Tempe, Arizona. You see me at those places, yep. obviously Ironman New Zealand. You see me at those places. Yes, the courses are amazing and lovely, but it's the people that I get that I get to be with and get to have fun with and get to enjoy my job with and business meetings with and the fun after with. So that's why I choose to go there. And that's but like, I love to try new races. Don't get me wrong, but it's like, I love what I have there so much that why wouldn't I just keep going back? You know, that's, that's what I think. <laughs> so it's funny. I was interviewing Dave Scott uh, yeah. earlier, and we were talking about, you know, it was a big deal in 1994 when he came back at the age of 40, racing as a professional. It was like, oh my God, this is, I mean, somebody 40 years old, the world yeah. has changed. Tom Brady's yeah. 43 and he's still playing. Yeah. And, and yep. you're a mom and mm -hmm. you're 40, you're going to be 41? Oh, Bob, I'm going to be 42 next Ooh! month. In June, right? Yes. End of June, yeah. 42. 42. Yeah. And feeling like you could go mm -hmm. for yeah. how long? How long you want to do this? Well, I said, like, I, and I'm not just saying this, but now one thing that um, lockdown has brought us, right, is a lot of virtual racing, right? Yes. And I was just saying this to my cycling coach and good friend, Kate. Uh, and I said, Cato, these 
and I'm not saying this, I'm just saying these numbers that I'm seeing or, or with my run coach, Sean, I'm like, these yeah. numbers I'm seeing, this is like positive here because they are, for me, they're, they're as fast, they're as fast, if not faster um, than they were back, back when I was 30 or 35 or wow. 37. So I'm like, right on, let's, uh, let's do this. But I'm not saying that to be like confident or anything. I don't mean it that way. I just mean like, I hope my best racing days are yet ahead of me. Um, I know that I, I've done the sport a long time for 20 years. So I know when to push and I know when to, uh, you know, wrap it up and take it as a web workout why even sure. bother workout and do something more productive in my time i mean one thing about being a mother is what what gets omitted so you can be um, a better mom for me everyone's different is not there's really no naps anymore recovery time is less um i i don't do a good job of eating properly in between like i'll just not eat because i'm like no i gotta get to mac um even now before this call i got home from my strength session and i went straight to him to get him up from his nap. And then I was like, oh, I should probably eat something, you know? So there's little things like that, that, you know, that that's, that's on me. And so I need to work on that. But, um, but yeah, I really hope that at 42, um, if we get to race this year, um, this next 12 months, that these can be some of the better racing, you know, and in and, and Ironman New Zealand, I laughed because in theory, I got crushed by Teresa Adam, who's amazing. Um, right. I got second, right? But for me, that was the best performance that I've ever done in an Ironman time-wise, how I felt-wise, my best marathon within an Ironman. And yeah, so to be, to, be at Tal to be at Talpo to do that was just like a big deal for me. And, um, and so that's why I'm still thriving. And I still remember to this day that um, Bevan Doherty said to me, and I, and I kind of get like a frog in my throat, and he said, Meredith, you really look like you're still loving it out there. And I said, I am, Bevan, I am. And so thank you for noticing that because I really, really am. Yeah. You know, that's the important part because when you, you know, we've seen it so many times where people just, you can look in somebody's eyes and they know what it's going to feel like when they get mm -hmm. to, if they're a marathon or when it gets to 20 mm -hmm. miles, mm -hmm. there's a, there's something there that you start to dread if you've done too many of them. Right. And with the Ironman, um, you know, I'm sure at mile 15 of the marathon, yeah, yeah, time, yeah. but you seem to, uh, mm -hmm. even after finishing 69 of them, you mm -hmm. still do love it. And you're, the spark is still there. That's, Thank you. That's, well, it's pretty unique. It's, it's very unique. Why do you think? Is it the fact that, that being a mom, you have to be more efficient? You don't have mm -hmm. to do the, the mm -hmm. really long hours like you yeah. used to. Your, your body's got right. a face and you can sort right. of refine that. Right. That's a a hundred percent a good point. Yeah. I rely a lot on um, muscle memory and I don't, th yeah, sure. I'm still, still putting in, you know, 22 to 26 hours a week of training, mm -hmm. but that to some, that's like, are you not doing it? I mean, I swim a lot. I, if there's any volume and I know that's changed, take COVID out of it, right. but um, uh, swimming is like my relaxation time a lot. Like I have your interval times, but I mean, that's where I would do like the pointless, like, I guess, um, yardage or miles sure. is in the water because it, because I'm older, uh, as an athlete for a living. Um, I, I like that. That's like my recovery. That's my nap. That's my like putting recovery boots on time. That is my recovery, but I use it for aerobic fitness too. But yeah, I, I, I don't do a lot. I, of five hours to six hours, seven hour rides, but I can do two to two and a half hours on a trainer or, or outside really, really hard and efficient. Um, but that works for me right now. And I rely, as my coaches will tell you a lot on those 69 Ironmans that are in my legs sure. um, because you don't want to show up to a race tired and not fit. Right. But not, t but tired. You want to show up like ready to go. Um, and that's, that was the goal, even in New Zealand, you know, I'm coming off of our winter here. Um, and Wanaka, I did challenge Wanaka two weeks prior. And I was like, you know, you know, it's like what they say, you know, get the cobwebs out. And that's right. what I was doing. And then I, I got a whole three weeks between those two races to train outside and just, you know, really focus on, you know, paces and running and nothing was long. Um, but it was efficient and it had a purpose. Yeah. It works for us, thankfully. And I could be better, though, Bob. I could, I could do those rides. I could. I just choose to have that balance, uh, so I can try to be the best mother that I can be. Yeah. Absolutely. I remember Karen Smyers telling me once that it's better to be ten percent undertrained than one percent overtrained. Always, She's, always. She wanted knows to, it. Yeah. yeah. Who, who knows she, better? 
Hey, Mayor, thanks so much for, one, Thank taking you. time to chat, but also what you guys are doing with the Real Mothers of uh, mm. Real Mothers of Triathlon with you and the amazing Marinda Carfrey. Now, yes. have you, got, you guys, uh, were you friends before yeah. you both became moms? Or? You know what? We were, honestly, and she would say the same. We were always, because um, we're of the same era, she's obviously been doing this because she started doing it um, way like way earlier yeah. yeah like nine, she nine, i mean nine. she really went because she was in olympic distance and then it's amazing right. to me but we were always friends to too like at the races how you doing rand like and then it was just then it got even more so because then we were pregnant at the same time izzy and mac izzy's like three months older than mac and then we kind of went through the comeback together too and then the like oh geez we have a little human now what are we doing with it <laughs> <laughs> and so uh that's been really fun and then then at race then at races together i remember texas 70.3 and trump uh 70.3 last year we just seeing Izzy and Mac together at the finish line or the pre-race fun was really cool. And so we got to talk about that and nursing and literally be nursing before we got in the water. You know, it's just like kind of crazy, but kind of, um, you feel like a special bond there at the same time. So for real mothers of triathlon, it's okay for guys to play too, right? This is for everybody. I had a couple of people ask that and I should have made sure it just is a mother's day weekend event. Yes. But anyone everybody. can join. And you don't, the key that everyone needs to know is you do not need to do the bike and run with us. You can literally just have it on in your, someone just texted me and was like, I'm really excited to join the event. I, I registered and I'm going to be painting my living room the whole time I'm listening to the show. I'm like, perfect. That's ideal. And we're going to have shout outs from all our peers. I've reached out to many of our peers, the Lindsay Corbins, Heather Jacksons, uh, and uh, all the Paula Finley, I could name a ton. And they're going to be giving shout outs throughout the live coverage. Um, and it'll be a true show. We put a lot of uh, dedication to it to bring the community together, highlight Challenge Athlete Foundation, and highlight our sponsors. Yeah, we got things. Sarah Reinertson is going to be interviewed by... Uh, yes. By Fireman Rob and Rudy yep, and Garcia yep. Tolson, and yep. it's uh, it's going to be a fun show. I can't wait to watch. It's going to be awesome. I hope everyone enjoys it. And if you have, please tell anyone. Anyone can reach out to me personally, but on Rini or my bio on Instagram or Facebook, you have the registration link. And all week, once you register, you'll be getting emails daily just with updates. And then I'm going to be posting the workouts we're going to be doing on Zwift and the link so that people can join the event virtually. Uh, when I say join the event virtually, I mean on, on the platform yeah. of Zwift. Um, and it'll just be really fun. Lots of giveaways and lots of fun together. Love it. Meredith, thank you so much for Thanks, taking Bob. time. Thank you. Meredith Kessler has been our guest. Again, you want to go to the Real Mothers of Triathlon. Uh, you can go to tzeroendurance.com or again to Meredith's site or to Rinnie's and you'll find all the information. We are brought to you by the Pro Triathletes Organization. Oh, I didn't, we didn't chat about that. Pro Triathletes Organization. What are some yeah. of your thoughts? PTO. What? Yeah. We have been, we feel so grateful that this is finally launched and happening and and yeah. to too during the live coverage we're, we're going to have a commercial for pto and he's going to talk about it also but actually that's another thing probably back in 2014 to rinnie jody swallow i could keep going there were like right. 10 of us still in mcneese um there were 10 of us that rachel joyce is a huge part of it because she's the co-president with yep. uh, to right now um but we tried to start this a long time ago but we we tried and tried and we didn't have, understandably, we were just these like triathletes where, I mean, while we wish we made Trahan Brady money, we don't, but if right. we did, we could have been our own investor. Um, but we were just looking for the right um, company, right leadership, right investor rather to, to kind of help get us on, on the platform. And right. now with Crankstart and with Charles Adamo's help, um, we have been able to do that. And we, as you might've seen, we just launched an event December 6th that is happening at Challenge Daytona. Uh, it's a huge price purse. It's in million bucks. a million bucks for the top 20 in the male and female category, uh, pro category. Uh, how often do you get to race around the Daytona uh, Speedway? I've done it twice now. It's, yeah. it's, you were there with me last year. Yeah. Um, it's an amazing venue and USAT um, is now involved and obviously the uh, Daytona International Speedway right. and PTO. So the three of those together, you better watch out. It's going to be um, 
something that you would not want to miss. So just the fact now that PTO is up and running, we're starting to um, really re like get out to the members, which are our fellow triathletes and colleagues. Yeah. We want them to feel like they have a, a voice and a place to be and that they are getting recognized for being a professional triathletes. And that's why literally PTO just paid the top, you know, top, uh, what, 200 ranked male and female, you know, athletes that are triathletes. That's, that's pretty darn good. Yeah. At, at a time where everybody certainly could use the money. A hundred percent. Yeah. Again, we are brought to you by the Pro Triathletes Organization, by Amp Human, Velo Fix, Norma Tech Form Goggles, You Can, our Challenge Athletes Foundation, the official charity of the real mothers of triathlon. Meredith, you are the best. Thanks for taking time. Thank you. Thank you, Bob.